This video is brought to you by Storyblocks Video. Okay, I'm not the biggest Sonic fan, but I think this doesn't really look like him. Damn it! I can do way better! Can we? Yeah! Okay, let's do this. Alright, awesome! One! 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 Oh, one shot, now the future for sure! You don't look like Sonic, Jordy! You're even worse than the movie! Shut up, Janik! I'm 100% Sonic! I'm blue! One chance at best, yes! Ouch, that has to hurt. But luckily, it's my time to present this week's Copycat Friday. So hello guys, Jannik here from Cinecam.net and welcome to another episode of Copycat Friday, a series where we recreate effects from famous movies and music videos. And this week, we couldn't ignore the trending hype around Sonic. However, we're not making him look better. In fact, Jordi looks even worse. But we are going to recreate his super speed. At first, we had the idea of doing the speedy rolling thing Sonic does. But after a whole day of trying to make it work, we decided not to do it. This was because none of us were familiar with 3D, so we had to work in a 2D plane. Sadly, this didn't look very realistic, or even good. So to maintain our high standards, we went for the regular high-speed run of Sonic. Of course, with the lighting and the long trail behind him. But before we can start creating this awesome effect inside After Effects, we first need our shots. And of course, I also want to thank our sponsors, Storyblocks Video. This is an online library packed with studio quality star clips, video effects, animations, templates, logo reveals, and so much more. There's only one single price per year, which allows you to download as many video assets as you want without additional fees. You can use anything for personal and commercial work, which makes their library so interesting. I can highly recommend to try it out and see for yourself what you can find in the Storyblocks library. For more information, you can follow the first link in the description below. Okay, Jordi. Time to become Sonic. These are Janik's shoes. Way too small. Ah, don't be silly, Jordy. Don't be silly. <laughs> I've got a bigger size than you, Janik. Mine's bigger. It's what you do with it. <laughs> Wait a second. Billy Eilish has blue hair, so that means I'm gonna dye my hair. Is it blue yet? Let's heal. Nah, this time I'm definitely sure. This is blue. I think I sprayed a little bit too much on the wrong part of his face. Yeah, <laughs> it's on my face, Janik, exactly. It's hairspray, not face spray. But at least I'm looking like 100% legit, like Sonic. Okay, now that Jordi is ready to play his part, we can make the shots we need for this effect. The first one is a shot of his shoes. The second one is a close-up of his face. And the last one is the shot where he is ready to run. With the last shot, you frame him on the right side, so that he has some room to run. Then when he runs out of the shot, keep your camera rolling so you can take an empty shot. All these three shots have to be on a tripod. We do this so we don't have to track the shots inside After Effects when we're adding all the effects to them. Okay. Now that we have everything, it's time to open up After Effects and start with the effects. The first one that I'm going to explain are the lighting bolts when he is readying up. Take the shot of the shoes and load it into a new composition inside After Effects. Then we are going to add a layer to put a lighting effect on it. So go to Layer, New and select Solid. The colors of the solid don't really matter, so you can press OK in the solid settings. The first thing you can do with the solid is trim it shorter. As the lighting bolt is a quick flash, you can make the layer around half a second or 12 frames. Now you can look for the advanced lighting effect in the effects library on the right. Select it and drag it to your solid layer. Normally, you immediately get a lighting bolt, but it doesn't really look that good. So let's start tweaking the settings. The first thing you can do is set the lighting type to strike. Then within the core settings, you can increase the radius to around 15, and decrease the core opacity to around 60%. Also change the color to a light blue or whatever you like. Next up are the glow settings. Here you can lower the opacity to zero as we are going to add a glow later on. As a final adjustment, set the turbulence to six and the forking to 15%. When you have followed along, your lightning bolt should look like this. 
but it's over the entire shot, not really what we want. So with the origin and the direction, we can place the lighting where we want on the shoes. First, we place the origin to start from the ground. When it's on the right spot, you can enable the animation for it. Then place the direction on the same spot as the origin. This will make the lighting disappear. Now also enable the animation for the direction. Go further in time to almost the end of the layer and animate the direction to where it has to go. This will make the lighting come out of the ground, shooting up to the shoe. But we also want to make it go up into the shoe. This you can do by taking the keyframe from the origin and placing it near the end of the layer. When it's placed, go further to the end and animate the origin to the exact same spot as the direction. With these two animations combined, you'll now have a lighting bolt shooting from the ground to the shoe and in the shoe. But the lighting is quite static, so to give it more motion, I'm going to animate the conductivity state. This, however, I'm going to do an expression to make it ourselves easier. Alt-click on the stopwatch of the conductivity state. Within the expression text box, type the expression wiggle, open brackets, 10, 20, and close the brackets. This will animate the lightning automatically, and now you will have this cool looking lightning bolt. An extra detail you can add is a small light detail on the starting point of the lighting. Create a new solid layer, but this time give it a very light blue color. Again, trim the layer shorter. Let it start one frame before the lightning layer, and let it end where the first keyframe of the origin is. Now with the blue solid selected, take the ellipse tool from the toolbar on top, and mask out a very small circle around the beginning point of the lightning. You can now set the blending mode to lighten and feather the mask a bunch. The last thing I now want to do is animate the opacity for the lighting spot. Enable the animation for the opacity in the beginning of the layer and set it to zero. Go one frame further and set it to 50%. Now that's all there is to it for making this cool lightning bolt. All the other lighting bolts work exactly the same, so you can duplicate the first layer you made and change the animations for this duplicate. Let them start on a different spot on the ground or on the shoe. You can also make them shorter in time, and if you really want, you can change the settings from the advanced lighting effect. Just keep duplicating and changing them until you have enough lighting bolts. After you have a cool bundle of lighting bolts shooting from the ground to the shoe, it's time to add some glow to it. Select every lighting and light layer, now right-click on the layers and go to pre-compose. Name your layer whatever you want and press OK. In the effects library, I'm going to look for the glow effect and drag that to the pre-composed layer. Then inside the effects control panel, I start changing the settings for the glow effect. Let's start with the glow threshold, which you can decrease a bunch. The glow radius is next and can be increased a lot. For the glow intensity, you can increase it a little. Now for the colors of the glow, we are going to take the A and B colors. These can be changed to something blue. For A, I took some light saturated blue, and for B, I went a little bit lighter. Now, the last thing you need to do for this lighting is set the blending mode from the layer to add. I know it's a little bit much, but let's admit, this looks pretty cool. Okay, so the only thing you need to run as fast as Sonic is lightning. Ah, Lorenzo, still so young and so much to learn, but there can only be one Sonic and that shorty. Now let's get further with the next effect. Here we are going to recreate the trail behind Sonic. Take the shot of your subject where he starts running and place it into a new composition. Then take an empty background and place it underneath the running clip. Now take the playhead and go further in time, to the point where your subject starts running. Here you can make a cut by pressing the short key, Ctrl, Shift, D. Now it's time to mask out Jordy. We are going to do this with the roto brush. So double click on the new layer after the cut, and take the roto brush tool from the toolbar above. Within the layer window, you can now roto brush a subject. Just go with your green brush roughly over the body of your talent. The brush tool will now make an automatically selection. Everything that is too much, you can remove by holding the alt key and brushing over it. Now use the page down button to go further in time while you are adjusting the rotoscope mask. This doesn't need to be super detailed as we are going to add motion blur and the result later on. So any mistakes will be covered. Now when you completely rotoscope the subject, go back to the composition panel. Here you can now see that Jordi is completely masked out. Now it's time to make him move faster. Right click on the masked out layer and select time and then time stretch. In the new pop-up window, you can set the stretch factor to 50%. If you now play this, you can see that Jordi is already moving faster, but it's still not enough. So open up the position property for the masked out clip and enable the animation one frame before the clip starts. Then move 10 frames further in time and move the clip to the left outside of the frame. Of course, don't forget to give the begin keyframe ease out. After this, you can enable the motion blur, giving the effect some extra realism. Next up is a trail behind Jordi. Duplicate the layer of Speedy Jordi by pressing Ctrl D. Right click on the duplicate and select pre-compose. 
Name the new layer, select Move All Attributes into a new composition and press OK. Then open up the new trail composition in the project panel. For this new composition, I want to add some extra motion blur to the animation of Jordi. This will make the trail longer. So go up to the menu on top and click on Composition. Composition Settings and go to the Advanced tab. There you can change the shutter angle to 72 degrees and press OK. Now in the new composition, you select the layer of Jordi and duplicate it. Move this duplicate one frame to the right and then do this four more times. Duplicate and nudge. After you have done this, go back to the original composition and here you can also move the pre-composed layer one frame to the right. Now you can already see a trail behind Jordi. However, I don't like it yet. So set the blending mode from the pre-composed layer to screen. I also want to make it more random and that's why I'm adding the turbulent displace effect to it. The only thing you need to change in the effects control panel is the amount to 40. Now just duplicate the trail layer two more times. This will make it more prominent and look better. However, there's one more detail I want to add. I know it's a long video, but this will really finish it. So stick by me. Select the empty background layer and duplicate it. Now from the effect library, take the glow effect and drag it to the new background. Go up to the effects controls and change the settings. Set the threshold to 40, the radius to 530 and the glow intensity to 0.5. Again, for the colors, we are going to use the A and B colors. Set them both to something light blue. Okay, now we have a glow all over the shot. Not something we want. So take the pen tool and mask out the glow underneath the trail. Also, don't forget to feather the mask a bunch. Of course, we are going to need to animate the mask as there is no glow when Jordi starts running and when he's off the screen. So enable the animation for the mask pad and adjust the mask so that it follows the trail perfectly. And last but not least, change the opacity from the new background from 100 to 50, and you can also change the blending mode to add. Whew, and that's all there is to it to make this very cool Sonic super speed effect. That was it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this very long video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you Storyblocks for the support. And like always, stay creative. You don't look like Sonic, Jordy. You're even worse than the movie! Shut up, Janik! This is 100% legit! I'm blue, so I'm Jonic! <laughs> Jonic! <laughs> okay, go. Up here, up here. <laughs> I'm Jonic. You're the uh, look. <laughs> there's a car.